All right, YouTube, welcome back. What's going on? It's your boy, Ben from Ams Game Studios here today, bringing you another YouTube video. And today I'm going to be showing you all how to play Project Zomboid using Hamachi uh, to play with your friends. Sorry, I was making sure I was recording. Um, all right, so first, um, the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, there's a couple different ways you can go about creating a dedicated server. But in my opinion, it is to create, um, first of all, a new folder name it whatever you want. So I'm going to just name this PJZ server. Go into that folder um, and then you're going to want to go on the internet and download Steam CMD. Now what Steam CMD does is allows you to, um, what's it called? I'm sorry, D uh, download like server packages straight from the Steam servers. Um, I, I've already done a lot of this once, so I'm not going to go full fledged with all of the setups just because I don't need multiple copies of all the files on my server, or my, my server, multiple copies of the server files on my computer. Um, okay, so what I am doing here is installing Steam CMD, and what this is going to allow us to do is download the Project Zomboid dedicated server. Now, if you don't know what Hamachi is, I have another video on it. It explains that you can use it to play uh, fr games with your friends without having to port forward by creating a connection to one another's computers and putting you on a net local network, uh, essentially. And what we're going to do um, today is show you how to use that to play Project Zomboid. Okay, so now that this is open and we can see it just says Steam, loading Steam API, okay, everything's good to go. So what you're going to want to do uh, first is type login anonymous. And what this is going to do is log you in anonymously to the Steam servers, as it kind of says there. After this is done, oh, sorry, one second. After this is done, uh, what you're going to want to do from there is type this next command, app underscore update. Um, sorry, one second. 380870 validate. And what this is going to do is install the project Zomboid um, server files. Now, usually this is just going to install at the root directory of wherever you're installing them inside of a folder called PJZ or something along those lines. Um, and there is a way to force the install directory, but I haven't had any luck with it today. And I just want to show you guys how to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and install these. Now I already have it installed. So now that I've shown you how to do this, um, let's see, is it actually going to go through with downloading them? It is. All right. So after that finishes, I'm going to go ahead and stop it just because I don't want to download things twice, as I said, but you'll let that run and it will create a server in the root directory like this, like I said, named PJZ. You're going to go into that, and what you're going to see is a collection of files and folders here, and this is your dedicated server. Now, the most important thing in here is the start server 64 bat. So, now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and run the server once, and you should always do this on the first time just to create any prerequisite files uh, that the server might require that aren't there just without starting it for the first time. Um, the reason I close that out is I want to show you guys the server settings here in a minute, and they are not actually in the de dedicated server file. Uh, they are stored within one of the project Zomboid directories. I'll show you where that's at in just a second, and I'll also uh, show you a different way to edit them. Um, the other important thing to know is that there is quite a bit of RAM allocated to the dedicated server by default. Uh, minus 16 gigabytes, I'm assuming that's everyone's. Not everyone has 16 gigabytes of RAM for it to be allocated, though. Uh, so once this is done launching, I will show you guys how to change that. Um, it's not that difficult, and there are two different ways to go about that as well, but there is only one way that really matters because it overrides the other uh, method. Um, so, and after all this, so like I said, I'm, we're going to go through um, the uh, RAM settings and the server settings. I'm going to go ahead and stop the server here because it just fully started. Uh, to do that, you just type quit. It'll save and shut down. This is always the best way to do it, uh, especially once you're actually playing with your friends because it will save the server before shutting down and you know cut out any possibility of you losing progress. All right, so now to change the RAM, and I'll link this program as well as Steam CMD and everything we've talked about so far in the description, including Hamachi. Um, and around this point right here, somewhere earlier in the video, there should be a banner uh, about the Hamachi tutorial video I have posted, just in case there's any confusion on that. But anyways, we're going to edit the start server bat here. And what this is going to allow us to do, sorry, I have to drag it over onto the screen, is change the RAM. So down here, much similar to Minecraft, 
um, there is an XMS and XMX argument because this is a Java based game. Um, and what you're going to want to do is change this down to whatever your preferred RAM amount is or up if you really do need 16 more than 16 gigabytes. Um, all right, so now that we've done that, uh, let's go ahead and get into the server settings real quick before I um, talk about Hamachi a little bit more and connecting with one another. And we're also, while we're looking at the server settings, going to go into adding mods to the server because I know that is very important to most of us Project Zomboid players. Now, to show you the easiest way to um, get to them in your file structure is to go to local disk C, users, your name, and then find a folder labeled Zomboid. In this Zomboid folder, you're going to see another folder called server. You click into that as well. I have multiple servers in here, but I can go based off the most recently created one, which is server test and server test underscore sandbox vars dot lua and dot i and i respectively. Um, the important file here for the settings is server test.ini. This is where you're going to change all the settings for your server, uh, as well as add mods and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and open this up so we can take a look at some of these settings together and I can show you guys some of the basic things that I have a feeling you'll want to change. Um, for players that are just looking for fun, here's the PvP setting. A lot of this is self-explanatory, like this is the welcome message. Um, the default port, which you won't need to be changing, this is just going to be left alone because you're launching this as if you're hosting it on your local network and your friend is going to join as if they're on your local network. Now right here, this is one of the first important fields for our mods uh, bit, which is going to be where you're going to, you're going to actually put the mod ID. The map ID you won't change unless you download a full map mod and that's not something I'm going to get into today. This is your server's name in the server browser. Not terribly important considering you're planning on just playing with your friends. And with this turned off right here, uh, you wouldn't see it anyways because it won't display in the server browser. This is where you can change your max players. There is a ping limit, hours for loot respawn, all of the basic good settings are in here. And now you're thinking probably exactly what I would be thinking. I don't want to sit here and edit this by hand. That's the good news. We're going to be able to do this in game. Um, but before we do that, I want to show you guys really the best way to add mods to the server without having to edit them in game uh, because it can be a little bit challenging. I guess this is probably more challenging, but anyway, so let's get into it. Um, so there's a website here called Project, or I'm sorry, it should really be said PZ ID Grabber as it is. And um, the cool thing about this is it allows you to create a collection, which I have mine that I made for my friend's survival server up here. Um, and you can take the URL from this. So once you've subscribed to all your wanted at, uh, workshop add-ons in the workshop, you can add them all to a collection and then take that link and plug it into this website. And what that's gonna do for you is create your mod IDs and your workshop item list. And you're gonna take both of these once it generates them and put them into this uh, server settings.ini or server.ini and uh, allow it to I'm sorry, not allow it to, but once it once they're pasted in there in those fields, it'll um, allow the server to download those mods. It's actually being pretty slow. I'm not sure why. So I might have to show you how to do this manually. Um, okay, that's not good that it's not working. Let me try with a, a smaller workshop. I hadn't actually tested it to this point. Um, and I thought it would be perfectly fine. <laughs> Let's see, um, I need something that doesn't have a ton of mods in it. 37, that should be okay. Uh, so let's just refresh it so it has a chance to think. 37 mods, that shouldn't be too bad, right? Okay, well, it's very anticlimactic, very disappointing. So I will show you all how to do this manually. Um, it's not too bad, really. So if you come back, I'm going to come back over here so I can show you. Um, there's a different way that these names are structured than you would think. So for the mods ID, they look like this for a lot of them. And the game will do this itself. So we're just going to go ahead and go in game here in a second. But the mod IDs look like this. Um, when you have other maps, you they add in here like this, but I'll also show you how to do this in game. And then... Um, wherever. Let me just search for the workshop IDs. This is the easiest part. Usually you can get away with just adding these and then it'll populate the mod IDs by itself. But again, we're going to configure this in game. So uh, there's nothing to worry about with that. Um, so let me 
pause the video real quick so I can launch my game and then we'll uh, get into configuring the mods and uh, maps. Sorry about the change up there. I wasn't expecting it not to work. All right, guys, we're back and I'm going to be getting into Project Zomboid now. Uh, sorry about the wait. <laughs> not that you guys had to. Um, so there is an easy way to edit these settings, as I was saying, and add mods within the game itself. It is to get on the game like this, manage settings, and then see server test right here. This is the server settings, edit selected settings. And then from in here, you can edit all of those settings we were just looking at. And this right here is where you add the mods. So from Steam Workshop, and it's not the greatest system in the world, which is why I was hoping the other system would work. Um, that's why I was torn between saying that was more trouble or this was more trouble. You have to sit here and click each and every single individual one like this. And then it will slowly but surely add all of your mods. Um, there are some workshop add-ons to uh, alleviate this. I'm not going to get into those because that's outside of the um, realm of this tutorial. And then also for the sake of the tutorial, I don't want to add too many mods to the server. I uh, don't want us to have to wait 10 minutes for the server to launch. Which, speaking of uh, that, we are going to go back and get into the server now and go ahead and launch it so I can show you guys what it looks like to connect with Hamachi. And speaking of Hamachi, like I said, if you haven't seen my other video, there'll be a banner um, probably a couple different times throughout the video. I uh, gotta check my Hamachi installation one second. I think it has moved. All right, so since Hamachi is actually off my computer, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this anyways. You're gonna look up Hamachi on the internet and you're gonna click the very first link. It's vpn.net. It's gonna take you to this page here. You're gonna download your respective platform. Mine was Windows, so I did download it. I'll click it again just so you can see. It downloads a file called hamachi.msi. Once that's downloaded, you'll open it and you'll see this. Um, so you're gonna go through the install here and I can actually, that's funny because it won't launch. So we're gonna reinstall it. I can show you all that we don't want to accept these bloatware uh, things here. So you're gonna hit cancel, oh, wait, no. Okay, as long as you didn't start for free, it used to be that there used to be like agreements. If you had agree, they would install them, but it's, they're gone. It was just an install button up here. But just watch out, make sure you're not accepting anything. Uh, those could still be there. Once this is installed, you'll launch it. Logme and Hamachi will open up. And you can see here, I have an IP. But uh, first, usually, by going online, it'll make me log in. At least it should. It's probing. Hold that thought. There we go. I'm on. And I've already got a network. I'm logged in. When it pops up, it'll make you log in. Um, mine didn't because I've been previously logged in. Uh, but you'll either make an account or log in. And then once you're in, uh, you're going to want to click on network. Create a new network. You can name it whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to name the Zomboid Server Tutorial to whatever. Password is going to be 123. Sorry, 12345. 12345. Create online um, still the most important thing here is your IP IPv4 address um, but you're gonna need to have your friend on their end with Hamachi go to network join an existing network and then here they'll put in this network ID that you made the zomboid server tutorial or YouTube server tutorial so one of these two right here um, and then on network ID they put that again the network ID and then the password would be that password we just made, in this case, one, two, three, four, five. Um, then they hit join, it joins them. You guys are then successfully connected to the same computer, that being yours, and only the host needs to make the network. If the person joining makes the network and you join them, it won't work that way. The person hosting needs to make the Hamachi network. Um, so once you all are connected to one another, you'll take that IPv4 address, this one right here, along with the Project Zomboid port that we discussed earlier. Um, I don't remember it, but I'll make sure that it's in the description. Uh, and then you go to Join. You can add a favorite server over here. Sorry, Siri, Siri heard me. You're going to put that IPv4 address in there. The default port for Project Zomboid. So hold on, let me get that real quick. 
Okay, so it's going to be either 16261 or 16262. I'm going to go with 16261 first. You can type 16261. Uh, if you set a server password um, and all that, and then you'll have to just add some account information over here. It's not all that important, but the game makes you. Uh, and then once it's there, let me refresh. You can see it's online. I can join it. You and your friend will also see this. You hit join server, and there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you play Project Zomboid over Hamachi with your friends. Um, I would like to add uh, a big shout out to the two people who have requested this video so far, and that would be Kaden uh, M two eight four five and Keck J i 23s so thank you guys for requesting this and uh, shout out to you all um this video is for you mostly i wouldn't have done it had you not asked so that's all everyone um have a good night and i will see you next time